Neil Ferguson, who is, of course, the infectious disease modeller and epidemiologist from Imperial College London and is on the line. Good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. Let's start with the impact of, of today's change in England. What do you think it'll be? So it v- very much depends on uh, the extent to which people do take that advice and get tested. Um, inevitably, lifting some measure like this will slightly reduce the effectiveness of contact tracing, um, but only slightly so long as people do take the advice to be tested and then, if they're positive, isolate. However, if people don't get tested, then we will see transmission tick up a little because of this measure. Stephen Reicher, we were talking to Professor Stephen Reicher, another government advisor earlier in the programme. He was that, that was the thing that concerned him most of all, that actually the advice should really be um, much stronger or indeed mandatory to get testing. Do you agree with him? I think overall the population has been really quite cautious coming out of this last lockdown. I think it's notable that we're still in the population at much lower contact rates than um, we were before the pandemic and even lower than we were this time last summer. So, I mean, I think it's political judgment as to whether make measures mandatory or compulsory. But I hope people remain cautious and do take the opportunity for a free test because you're protecting um people who are vulnerable in mm. society by doing so and reducing transmission. What, what, what's your thinking now about where we might get to in terms of daily cases? Because, of course, we had the, the 100,000 number and then it seemed that that wasn't going to be the case. And plainly in this wave so far, we've been well under that. Do you think we could still get to 100,000 a day? Well, I've learned my lesson in terms of being over eager at making those sort of predictions. What we've seen is a and it probably was associated with the euros, that rapid uptick in early July and then rapid decline. But case numbers have basically plateaued at this time and are really quite high at about 30,000 cases a day. That's a slightly sobering situation to be in coming into September because our contact rates, as I said, about half of normal levels. And in school holidays, children don't have that many contacts and we'll be reopening schools. People will be going back to offices in September. So we still have the potential of quite a large wave of infection in September, October. Right. So we could still get to the 100,000 or close to it. It's possible. It's very hard to make those predictions at the moment. What we can be confident in is vaccination is protecting people against the most severe disease. So it's very unlikely we'll see levels of deaths, for instance, comparable with what we saw this January. The real question is, more important, frankly, than the numbers of cases, is what does that do to NHS demand Mm. and admissions to hospitals? Um, And we, in, in the worst case scenarios, we could be getting probably not up to January levels, but still at levels of well over you know a thousand admissions per day potentially, which does stress the health system. And we already have very long backlogs in the health system, so any stress on it is is challenging. But there is a big difference. We now this we're not going to be clo- stopping this wave with lockdown. What it will stop with is the acquisition of immunity of the population, and so will naturally decline. And that's. Coming back to your original intro to this, mm. that's the point where we start living with COVID, where it becomes an endemic disease. That That's a really interesting point about immunity, because we, we heard recently from um, Professor Sir Andrew Pollard, the, the director of the Oxford Vaccine Group, he, he uh, told Parliament that the idea of herd immunity is mythical. I think that's the word he actually used. And his point being that the, the, the because um, this disease can still be passed between people who are vaccinated and people who are vaccinated can get it, we are not going to get that kind of immunity. What, what's your view of what he said? So he's absolutely right that you know people quote that 92% of adults have, have antibodies at mm. the moment, but only about half of those are probably protected against infection. So there's a lot of transmission going on between vaccinated people. That said, vaccination still is having a downward pressure on transmission. Um, It does provide some protection, imperfect, and it probably reduces uh, infectiousness of people. And so the situation would be, even not counting hospitalizations, just in terms of transmission, would be much worse if we didn't have vaccination. So to some extent, we have this population immunity, which is putting this downward pressure on virus. Whether it's ever going to be enough, which I think is Andy's point, to stop transmission is an open question. We may well move to a much more kind of endemic situation of hopefully low level transmission in the population. And we know that immunity wanes over time. So we'll 
probably have to top up vaccination mm. at some point. That's an interesting word, endemic. So, I mean, we are then talking about living with it, aren't we? What, what, what is the rate of transmission, I suppose, is the question with which we can live? It's an interesting question. I don't think we can answer it um, easily. And we have a parallel with influenza pandemics and we live, we get influenza pandemics very episodically and then we end up living with that virus, a seasonal flu. And so I think we still could see quite substantial transmission coming into the autumn, going up to, uh, to the winter. But predicting further than that is, is very difficult. We don't know how much the virus will continue to change and evolve. And that's probably the most important determinant of, of how much infection we get in future. Of course, how much we can live with is a societal and political judgment as much as a medical one. Professor Neil Ferguson, thank you very much. It's three minutes to eight. I'm in Edinburgh this morning and I'm hoping that Susan